Some days, I feel like I'm on top of it. Like I know what I'm doing. I'm all around it. I'm the soft, gooey center of donut knowledge. Most days, 99% of the time, I have no bloody idea what's going on. Can you raise your hand if you've ever had the thought, I really hope they don't find out I have no idea what I'm doing. Just smile and nod. Yeah? Yeah. Those of you who haven't put up their hands are just lying. You're all liars. <laughs> See, I foolishly thought that getting a full-time job meant I automatically leveled up into being an adult, that I automatically acquired all knowledge about everything ever. You know, all the adult things like negative gearing, home loans, stamp duty, I still have no idea what that is. And programming, which apparently is my job. Weird. Today, I'm going to talk about how I got into the tech industry, what I do now that I'm actually here, and how you don't even have to be a maths whiz or mega nerd in order to be successful and have fun. In fact, you don't even have to know what you're doing half the time. You see, one of my mentors once told me, knowledge is like Swiss cheese, and everyone's Swiss cheese is different. That means everyone has different gaps in knowledge in their Swiss cheese. And that doesn't mean that you don't know things or aren't smart. It just means that you know different things. All right, let's back up a bit and talk about someone awesome, me. I'm Millie, by the way. I think it's on the program sheet. I like video games, cats, and sports. In fact, if this talk was about cricket, you'd all be here for an hour. I grew up in Brisbane, which is nice and sunny and hot, and I've always wanted to be a video game designer. I've, ever since I could touch a computer, I've wanted to design video games. Although I grew up in Brisbane, I actually went to senior school and university in Melbourne, which is a bit, bit colder. And it was at Melbourne I went to Monash University. At Monash, I decided to study multimedia and digital arts, uh, partly because uh, I thought the games degree had too much maths, and I'm really bad at maths, and I like to draw things, as you can see. What is multimedia, anyway? I'm not really sure, but what I studied at university was stuff like animation, you know, motion graphics, film, website design, and 3D modeling. So by the end of graduation, I was a little bit OK at a very wide spectrum of things. Definitely not a master at anything at all. It was in 2014 that I went to a conference, and I heard about this company called REA Group, who run the realestate.com.au website. I'm guessing most of you probably don't know about them, because hopefully you're all too young to own a house. I don't even own a house. Please don't tell me you own a house. <laughs> they had, I heard that REA Group actually had several IT graduate positions open. Uh, now, a graduate position is kind of like an internship, but you actually get paid for it. And your job is basically just to learn, and hopefully, you get a job at the end of it. So I applied for it, on a whim, never actually thinking I could get the job. I mean, how could I? I barely knew HTML. Uh, that's the language that kind of builds websites. I was a master of Flash, which no one uses anymore. And, you know, if you wanted a 3D bouncing ball, I was your gal, you know, hi me, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually thought of myself as a software engineer. I got the job, though, and I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it, really. I'm still waiting for a call from HR saying, oh, Actually, there's been an administrative error, and you haven't actually got the job that you've been doing for the last year. Oh, sorry. You see people, and kids, I guess. I have a severe case of something called imposter syndrome. Has anyone ever heard of imposter syndrome before? Can you raise your hands? Yeah, a few at the back. Imposter syndrome is a mindset where you think all your accomplishments and accolades only come to you through luck or coincidence. You know, it can be really hard to accept the fact that you might actually be awesome, and that 
a lot of other people think you're awesome too. You know, a typical case of imposter syndrome hit me really hard the other week, you know, at a conference here in Sydney. God, I, I go to a lot of conferences, don't I? I was at a convenience store and I was grabbing a drink. My name, my name badge read Millie Rowett, REA Group, Engineer. And the attendant said to me, oh, you're an engineer, really excited. And of course, I just had to talk myself down. Oh, no, 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 I'm just a software engineer. Or actually, I'm more of a front-end developer. Uh, actually, I'm more of an IT graduate, yeah. Uh, honestly, I just write CSS, sometimes, badly. There's a lot of justs in that sentence. You know, just a software engineer, just an IT graduate. And the first weeks at REA, where I work, was like drinking from the fire hose. You know, the more I learnt and was taught and absorbed about computers and technology, the more I realised I didn't actually know that much about computers. I, mean, I thought I was pretty hot stuff. You know, when my grandma needed her computer fixed, she would call me. I could install a printer. You know, I'm probably the most computer literate person in my family. This, this is an example of a programming language called Haskell. Has anyone ever heard of this programming language before? Wow, OK, way more than I thought. <laughs> For those who don't know, Haskell is a functional programming language. That means that almost everything is dealt with in functions and algebraic data types. It is nightmarish to me. It hurts my brain. It makes my brain expand and explode. In a good way. Wait, what? In a good way? That doesn't make sense. You see, this stuff is so hard to wrap my head around. I'm, I'm not a maths person. I'm not a science person. I'm a creative type. I like, I like to make things, you know, I like to draw. This, this stuff is hard for me. So every day at the end of work, I would go home mentally exhausted and basically go straight to sleep, trying to wrap my head around all these new things that I've never heard of, like a, you know, functions and algebraic data types that I just, I don't understand. In order to actually learn something, I had to ask really stupid, obvious questions. I had to shed my dignity and pride and ask stuff like, so what's, what's going on with, 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 with all of it? What's, 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 what's this doing? I still have no idea. It was embarrassing and it was hard. But it was when I actually started to ask these questions, I actually started to learn something. That's not to say working at REA is all perpetual confusion and sadness and, and me crying in a corner trying to figure out what sequence comprehension is in Haskell. Um, some of you probably know that really well. That's embarrassing for me. At REA, we have a research and development team called the Innovation Team. This team is, is the guys in charge of learning how we can use virtual reality augmented reality, drones, you know, hand recognition technology in order to make property more easy and fun, basically. All that stuff sounds pretty awesome to me. Can you raise your hand if that, that sounds pretty awesome to you guys? You know, virtual reality, drones, robots, like, come on, right? Thought so. Uh, that's why I went and worked with them for three months. And I was, I was away from the hardcore programming, the, you know, the functional programming that I was not very good at, and suddenly I was actually pretty comfortable in a space where I was kind of good at stuff. You know, I got to experiment with virtual reality and, and designing for virtual reality and making property-related apps. You know, speaking of experimenting, at REA, we have these things called hack days. Uh, can I get a hand up if you've ever done a hackathon or any hack days? Yeah? Not many? A few? Really recommend it, by the way. 
If, you've, if you ever see one, just, just go for it. They're so much fun, and you don't need to be good at anything, but you will learn a heap load. For those who don't know, a hack day, or at REA at least, is about two to three days a quarter where all the real work just stops, and we get to work on or hack on whatever project just sounds really cool. You know, we've created arcade machines, robots, apps, beer engines, and maybe a WordPress website or two or three. The first hack day I attended was I got to work with the innovation team on a project called Virtual Suburbs. It was basically a Google Street View experience inside virtual reality, where you could go into any of the houses and actually explore around them. It was freaking cool. It was in these hack days that all my miscellaneous knowledge that I learned in my university course of all things suddenly became super valuable. You know, we need someone to 3D model something in Maya. Oh, me, me, I can do that. Uh, OK, well, we need someone who knows their way around WordPress plugins. Me, 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 I can do that. I can do that. I was in high demand, and it felt good. But by far, my favorite Hack Day project we worked on was called The Plank. The Plank itself is pretty simple. And I won't lie, the main objective of it was just to mess with people. OK, that's not exactly true. It was more to show how immersive virtual reality could actually be. And it was fun to experiment with a new technology, like the HTC Vive virtual reality headset. Has anyone heard of that or tried it out? Yeah? Yeah, lots of people. Nice. Good crowd. So the plank project itself was basically a plank of wood on the ground about five centimeters up. We put the willing participant on one side and asked them to cross the plank and back. Now, it sounds pretty simple, but when you put the headset on, suddenly you are transported about five stories up on a building with the sound of the wind rushing through the headphones at you. And just to screw with them a little bit more, we had a real fan in the corner, blowing wind at them as they tried to cross. It was hilarious. Some people could not even cross, could not even take a step. They would just shake uncontrollably, their palms would become sweaty, and they were glad they were wearing their brown pants that day. <laughs> Some people crossed the plank without care in the world. You know, such a variety of reactions really taught me a valuable lesson. You can't assume how people are going to react. Obviously, I think virtual reality is amazing. Like, amazing. I think it's the future. I want to do everything in virtual reality. I want to eat, I want to sleep, go to the toilet, why not? Every day. <laughs> Turns out, not everyone thinks like me. And when you're developing virtual reality apps, you can kind of get stuck in a mindset where everything you touch, you think is awesome, and people need it in their life. Turns out that's not the case. That's why we ended up testing what we made with real people in the real world, you know, outside the company. People like you guys, people like Deborah, the 50-year-old debt collector who, uh, said she'd break my thumbs if I made her vomit. We showed her the Google Cardboard, the Samsung Gear VR, you know, 360 photos, virtual tours. Has anyone ever heard of any of these things that I'm talking about? Yeah, most of you, nice. Their resounding sentiment about what we showed them. Oh, that was cool but my couch doesn't swivel. What? The swivel being a reference to the fact that when you're wearing a virtual reality headset, you actually have to move your head 360 degrees in order to see all the content. You know, just like in real life. All this expensive, new, and innovative technology disregarded by these people because they're plush sofas do not rotate. And our people, these people did not want to turn their heads. Our team was so focused on the engineering, nerdy tech side, wrapped up in the excitement of virtual reality, 
that we didn't stop to think about how real people would actually use this app in real life. We didn't even think about the product side. I mean, how would you even sell an app like this? You know, it's not many people even have virtual reality headsets yet. Can you raise your hand if you actually own a Samsung Gear VR or Google Cardboard? A few cardboards, yeah. Not many people at all, not, not at all. And it's not like books that we've had a thousand years to reflect the user experience of. I mean, how, what are the rules for designing for virtual reality? I don't think anyone's really written any yet. Well, there is one rule. People should not vomit after they use, their app, use your app, actually. Notice how I've got a lot of unanswered questions. I don't know the answer to them. I'm trying to find them out. To do that, I've got to ask a lot of stupid, obvious questions. Questions to people like you guys, people like my mum, even my grandma. I've got to get outside of my tech bubble and start to realize what humans actually use stuff for. Great innovative products come from diverse input. They don't actually come from sweaty, nerdy, neck-beardy guys sitting in their mother's basements. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not great at maths or science or chemistry or anything, but I still code. And I can still be successful, and I still have fun at work. And that's OK. That took me a while to figure out. And it's OK if you guys ever feel like you're in the dark and you don't know anything, and everyone else seems on top of it. Because I guarantee, one day, that weird specific thing that you know will be the same thing that makes other people tear their hair out. For example, those same people who are really good at Haskell they balk in amazement at my mastery of CSS. For those who don't know, CSS is the language that makes the internet pretty and basically looks like color equals blue. That's, that's about it. My point is, when that moment comes and you find yourself with something to say, make sure you share your knowledge. Because knowledge that isn't shared, there's not much point. It's just going to sit in your brain, doing nothing and only benefiting you. We all want to be better versions of ourselves. You know, just like apps constantly updating on our phones, you know, we want to be Millie version 2.0, you know, 3.0. We want to be better every day. Look, thanks for, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, this is one of my first talks ever.